just a quick update and I'm also going to throw in a little clip of uh, one of seven 60 plus foot tall ash trees that I felled yesterday the reason it's going to be a quick one is I'm very sore I'm very tired I've got blisters on top of blisters on top of blisters my shoulders hurt my neck hurts my back hurts my legs hurt just about every I, I, I woke up this morning though so that's a positive thing but I definitely should not have worked as hard as I did yesterday because I'm paying for it today anyway little CL 200 quick update was missing you know a bunch of nuts and bolts for the engine missing engine mounting brackets and bolts for that this that and the other so I got on the Wondamus interwebs and managed to locate a CL200 that had been disassembled so I have my engine mounting brackets I have most of the hardware for the bike itself and then inside this bag is a plethora of bolts and screws and nuts and springs and internals and externals uh, parts for the engine itself and the engine right now is sitting over here in what appears to be a fully assembled condition but it is not fully assembled and ready to run because well the pistons are still sitting over here ha uh, new engine or new gas tank gasket uh i got everything excuse me i got everything in today that i wasn't supposed to get in until monday so it was kind of cool so i got my gas tank gasket new keys for the cl and the two bags of goodies but this piston wasn't froze sorry that piston was not froze this one was and I didn't notice this when I went to pick the engine up but they beat the tar out of it so I'm probably just going to go ahead and buy two new pistons and rings and wrist pins and retaining clips uh, but the engine is together like this so that I can take all these goodies here and make sure that I've got everything I need to mount the engine safely obviously and also to make sure that the engine has all of what it needs to get put back together as far as nuts and bolts and valve rocker cover acorn nuts and all that and uh, I went through and did some counting and it appears as though at least 90 percent of everything that I need is in is is right here and total 48 bucks that was two parts lots from the same seller for a 1975 or 74 CL 200 20 bucks per lot and eight dollars to ship so yay me and this is why I got another gas tank gasket because there's nothing left of this one I'm also doing a little bit of evapo rust evapo rust removaling right here we have the cap insert for that the o-ring goes on for the gas cap seal underneath that is our clutch cover and right here is our tachometer cover it's not fully submerged but I will fully submerge the rest of it uh, tomorrow after I take those two pieces out um, but they were really really bad in really bad shape in fact I'll go ahead and show you what it looked like here real quick come on phone turn 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 okay there is a B4 all right so we're gonna see what it looks like after we get it pulled out of the evapo rust the tachometer cover was not as bad and something that was a really 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 nice surprise you know it's I told you guys in the last video it was nice to get the CL200 manual well I got to the back very back page of the manual I thought well there's an extra piece of paper there well, it looks blank I almost threw it away but I'll tell you what it's a real good thing I didn't the complete CL200 wiring diagram or schematic as we would call it here so yay that is awesome and fantastic and great and and all those other words that just make you want to hop up and down if you weren't so tired kind of thing right so we've got that uh, I'll still have to get the manual 
I thought that I was going to be covered with one manual that I had, which was I think a hundred and what was it, hundred and seventy-five or hundred cc or whatever. Let me just grab it because I don't remember. Uh, one twenty-five to three hundred and fifty cc climber book, but guess when they made a major overhaul to the engine? Yes in 1974 so I'm gonna order the right manual and it should get me along far enough and then this manual I will send to my buddy Heliarch who is gathering parts that will work with my bike from his 175 scrambler parts bike and he's gonna send those parts to me which are gonna further save me money we exchange stuff back and forth all the time so I'll pay shipping and he'll send it out and then if he needs something he'll pay shipping and I'll send it out so on and so forth back and forth and everybody lives in a very happy place um, I'm sorry I'm just throwing stuff away all right o-ring gasket uh, I've got two cables one is the tachometer cable the other is the clutch cable the gauges are incorrect but I did check them and they both operate the way they're supposed to operate so if anybody knows exactly what model they came off of and they are in need these wires on this one have been cut there's just lights for that one and this one retains its pigtails its proper pigtails and the remainder of the wires that would go into the light bucket have been cut but if anybody knows what those go to or they think that they are in need and it's something that uh, would benefit them you guys can let me know we've got 16 now obviously since we've got kilometers on it it's for a newer bike from the 80s on um, but 16,719 miles on it uh, the faces are not cracked and I don't know if they're glass or not I think they are glass uh, but they, they operate so you know if 90 what would that be 9300 rpm roughly anyway if you know if you think you need those let me know we got three and three quarters inches from edge to edge and the trip odometer dealio does work but this is not a sales video uh, I was just letting you guys know that it's there and available if anybody's needing it, like uh, Sir Moto or somebody like that, Midwest Motor Rider. Um, but anyway, that's it. I'm going to round it out so that you guys aren't too bored and I have managed to make it through the video and stay on point. So, did I mention I got the keys? Yeah, I mentioned I got the keys. Uh, that's it. Good enough. I know this is a boring one, but I do thank you guys for sticking with me for this eight and a half minutes. Uh, if you didn't think it was too boring, smash that like button for me. If you didn't think it was too boring, consider subscribing if you're not already. Thanks. Zippo later. I'm out of here.
Okay gang, as you saw from yesterday's video, which you won't see until right before this clip, uh, got the engine just mocked together so that we can see how it's going to do it fitting with all the hardware that I got that is in the little tote right where the engine should be. Not doing that today, I'm doing something different today, something with the CB125S. But before I do that with the CB125S, I wanted to show you guys essentially that this engine is half or is twice what the CB125S is. Because this is the exhaust off of the 125S. Um, why is it off? Well, it's crusty it matches this engine perfectly you can see got this cleaned up it looks uh, better than it did but still not fantastic uh, I did soak this stuff overnight and appears as though it doesn't like to remove rust from chrome which I thought was kind of interesting but that's okay not real worried about it uh, what I'm gonna do today is actually wrap with titanium wrap and the reason I'm going to do that will become quite apparent after I pause the video and then turn the video camera back on and show you although we look great here I'm going to show you the back side so give me just a minute all right here it comes the previous owner blew a bunch of holes in the back side of it and it is very rusty all the way around the back very rusty so it is going to get titanium exhaust wrap done from here up uh, the back side pretty clean there is still one baffle in here there was a baffle in the end uh, I tried to weld it on and as you can see I just blew a couple more holes into it but the muffler was already pretty much toast, so no skin off my back, no big deal. I'm going to go ahead and cut it back just a little bit more because my cut is nowhere near being straight. It's kind of hard to see now, but I'm going to cut it back some more. Uh, I'll show you that the baffle inside, maybe. This isn't working out. Hang on. Let me just set it on the ground here. That'll make it a little easier. Okay. There. Now you can see the baffle that's in there. So that's the only baffle that's in there. So this is kind of acting like a trumpet, the rest of it. So we've got plenty of room to just cut it and clean it up and make it look just a little bit better. Not going for absolute beauty queen. And I'm also not going for sound. Now, the reason I'm wrapping it um, is to hold the heat in, and there's this whole deal with the uh, pressure wave, and you typically only scavenging 90% of your exhaust out and leaving 10% in by retaining the heat in the pipe. It helps to scavenge out more than that 90%, leaving the remaining 10%. So if I can scavenge out 95%, pull in a hotter charge, maybe I can get up to 67 miles an hour instead of 65. But also, just to improve the appearance a little bit on the exhaust, and I will eventually source a replacement, um, hopefully an OEM that is in a lot better shape than this one. But because they're a single cylinder and blah 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 they're always gonna blue I've never seen one that is not blued so I just want to cover that blowing up some people like the blowing some people don't I'm one of those that really doesn't like the blowing so I'd much rather just have the titanium wrap so what does the titanium wrap look like it's actually titanium infused fiberglass wrap that has a carbon fiber look to it so I think it's gonna look good as well as pop 
possibly give me a couple more miles per hour out of the thing. So let's get to wrapping. Okay, here's the end tro, I guess you would call it. Last clip of the series of clips on Little Billy and its exhaust. I didn't even clean this after I did everything to it. I uh, went ahead and cut it down so that I'm still, you know, forward of the baffle, but I just like, it. since it was already a really jacked up exhaust, um, I went this route. And here's my wrap. You see here. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm really digging it. That's just a shadow. It's not dark. It's just a shadow from the engine case. But I'm digging it. Wrap came out really, really nice. And as it heats up, it's uh, hardening. This is not a type of wrap that you have to wet. Some you do, some you don't. This is a, this one in particular, you do not wet it. Uh, you just wrap it on, make sure that you're overlapped about a quarter of an inch, and you're off and running to the races. So I wasn't real sure how close I could get to the collar, so it took a couple of tries to make sure that because I, in order to take the exhaust off, the collar has to come back a little ways. So. But that's enough babbling on that. Let me clip it onto something here so that you guys can hear it. I'll start it up for you. I'll end it. And I'm currently editing the rest of the video, so we'll go in and put this clip on it. If you guys enjoyed this, please click the thumbs up button. If you didn't enjoy it, click the thumbs down. Thanks. Here we go. This thing starts so easy. Okay guys, we'll see you on the next one.